sisters in birth. And we're going to be talking about something that's very vital for the ladies in here uh, and maintaining and keeping a healthy pregnancy. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of what's been happening in this, the COVID world. We call this now the post-COVID world. So we are all about trying to keep uh, our ladies healthy, but we're also trying to keep these fetuses healthy as well and make sure that everyone uh, is living and able to live healthy and happy lives. So uh, Getty, talk to us a little bit about, you know, the crusade that you have been on here lately right. about educating young ladies about uh, their COVID, uh, you know, pregnancy in this post-COVID world. I'm sorry. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Glad you're here. So this is a part of an ongoing effort to help women, particularly women who are pregnant, to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Mississippi, more Mississippians died from COVID. I, I don't want to say that. Here's what I want to say. Okay. Mississippi had the third highest rate, death rate from COVID. Mm -hmm. A significant number of those people were black. It was primarily because they had underlying conditions like diabetes, heart disease, mm -hmm. obesity was one too. Mm -hmm. And we found the same underlying problems with pregnant women who died. Mm -hmm. I think all of those 25 pregnant women who died were black, young black women. Um, they had not been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Obesity was an issue. Mm -hmm. Hypertension was an issue. Mm -hmm. Diabetes were an issue. So mm -hmm. these were women who were already sick. Mm -hmm. Then here comes COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID is an opportunistic infection, like any infection. Yes. And when your immune system is compromised, as it is when you are pregnant, yes. your immune system becomes compromised, your lungs don't function as well, yes. and your heart has more stress on it. Yes. That's for every pregnant woman. Yes. Now you add to that illnesses, you add obesity, you add the conditions I just mentioned, then you throw in COVID, mm -hmm. and you're not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So what we learned was pregnant women um, across the country, actually, got vaccinated, if they became infected, they were far less likely to end up in the ICU. Okay. But women who were pregnant, had those conditions in Mississippi, mm -hmm. not vaccinated, they were more likely to need breathing assistance, yeah. or respirator, mm -hmm. be in the ICU. They had severely pre premature babies, like 25 weeks. Mm -hmm. You know how long those babies would probably be in the ICU or yeah. were in the ICU? Yeah. And yeah. the moms died. The babies were delivered through C-section. Mm. All those moms died. So a lot of people think that we are behind COVID or COVID is behind us. Right. We are ahead of COVID. COVID has become influenza. It's mm -hmm. just another infectious disease that we have to continue to yeah. be vigilant against. Yes. And influenza is another disease that can put a pregnant woman in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the CDC Foundation and as a grantee, to educate as many women as possible, particularly black pregnant women as possible, about why they need to protect themselves. They still need to wear a mask. They still were pregnant. Mm -hmm. A flu season is upon us. Mm -hmm. COVID is year round. Mm -hmm. They need to get vaccinated. Some are concerned about infertility issues. Some are concerned about miscarriages. Some are concerned that the vaccine will end up causing, causing an infection in their baby. None of that is true. That's all lies, disinformation, myths. Mm -hmm. This is not a live virus. It is not live at all. Uh, there's no evidence to show that if you get the vaccine, you're gonna have a miscarriage. Look, women are gonna have miscarriages. Yes. Whether they're vaccinated or not. Yes. Uh, it's just something that, that goes along with being pregnant right. for some people. Right. Uh, so it does not increase the likelihood of a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't increase the chances of you becoming infertile or your, your mate, your partner becoming infertile. It does provide passive protection to the baby if you are breastfeeding. I want you to repeat that. I think that is very important. I think people need to hear that again because you hear and you read so much sensational and fear mongering mm -hmm. online. So the vaccine does not what? I want you to repeat does that. Does not me. increase your chance of having a miscarriage. It does not increase the chance of you becoming infertile or your partner becoming infertile if he gets vaccinated. It does not increase the chance, which is another word for probability, yes. of your baby becoming infected. It is not a live virus. The CDC has a campaign called Pregnant and Protected. I would encourage everybody to go to that website, listen to the stories of other women who are pregnant, 
read the information. It, it breaks it down, it keeps it very simple. If you want to protect yourself and reduce the likelihood, the greater chance of ending up in the ICU, of needing help with breathing, of having a severe premature born baby, of dying, come on, we're talking about dying now. Yes. More black yeah. women die right. from pregnancy than any other group. Correct. Mississippi has the highest rate of black mothers dying from pregnancy than any other state Correct. in the country. Correct. We have the highest rate of infant mortality. Correct. We have the highest rate of premature babies already. Correct. We have the highest rate of fetal deaths for babies born. Yeah. We have the highest rate of C-sections. We have the highest rate of low born birth, low birth weight babies. Mm -hmm. We're just the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. And the worst is among black women and their children. Yep. This is just one more problem we have to deal with mm -hmm. from a public health point of view. Yeah. So here's what we're doing. Okay. We have a grant from the Mississippi Department of Health. We have a community health worker program. Another word for that is birth worker. Okay. Everybody's looking for a doula. Let me tell you something. The doula will not change these conditions. What we have is a community health worker program where we, it's free. Mm -hmm. And we enroll women who are pregnant as soon as they become pregnant. We give them free prenatal vitamins. We get them to change their diets. We help them to gain a healthy weight. We have actual exercise programs. We teach the father to become a doula, a birth partner. Or we teach your mother or your sister, whoever's going into labor with you, we teach that person how to go into labor with you to help you prepare for labor, labor to maintain or manage your pain. And it is especially important for women who don't want to have a C-section. Uh, black women have the highest C-section rate in the country. Mm -hmm. Mississippi has the highest in the country. And one of the main reasons for the C-section is OBC is a reason and black women being induced. When they are induced, they have a greater chance of having a C-section. So our program is designed to work with them as soon as they become pregnant and their partner or family member throughout the pregnancy, prepare them for labor, and we come check on them at home, help them with breastfeeding, do post home, uh, uh, postpartum home visits, make sure they survive okay. pregnancy, make sure the baby does, uh, and labor and delivery, and make sure the baby survives. So if they want to, if your listeners are pregnant, mm -hmm. um, if they want to participate in this free program, our seats are limited, space is limited okay. because our, our budget is small. We're right. a nonprofit. Right. They can go to my website, SI. B I R T H dot org, that's cybirth dot org, fill out the contact form. We only ask for your name, your email address, your phone number, and we can have you enrolled in this program. We are enrolling people now, limited seating, but it is a dynamic program. We've been doing it since 2015. Okay. Started doing it in Natchez. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved here in 2019, started doing it in Jackson, and we've published results showing the, how effective it is, it's extremely effective. And those are on the website too as well, the results? The results aren't on the website, okay. but I can send them to you. Okay. They're not on the website. Okay. But we have a lot of reviews, Good. a lot of excellent reviews Good. on Google and on the website, videos on the website, mm -hmm. women telling their stories. Uh, and so yeah, we have community health workers, all of who had a natural birth, 40 weeks, 42 weeks, mm -hmm. no inductions, no epidural, uh, they were prepared, they breastfeeding their children, mm -hmm. they're happy, the, ch the children are happy and healthy. And so yeah, if, if women want to have that kind of experience, we can prepare them to do that. We're also building a birth center Okay. that will be ready hopefully by the summer of next year. All right. And uh, the birth center will allow women to, or allow the midwives to deliver the babies at the birth center. But for, for now, we are offering this free, dynamic childbirth education program. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to, to change the circumstances, if you want to improve your health, because we want you to be healthy after the baby's born. Correct. We Correct. want you to be healthy before you get pregnant again. Correct. We want you to spread out those pregnancies so you're not having them back mm -hmm. to back. That mm -hmm. increases the risk of a premature mm -hmm. baby too. Mm -hmm. uh, I think black women have a premature birth rate like 18.5. I mean, come on, you know how many babies that come out to be? Yeah. And yeah. right here in Hines County, we have the highest every year in Hines County. We also have more babies being born, but we have more birth disparities than any other county. Wow. 
So anyway, that's so the COVID is just a part of that. And, and you know, you know, in this state where we've been fighting for for Medicaid, we've been fighting to make sure that everyone in this state has access to health care. Uh, it, it's wild that these things are still occurring in 2023. And of course, you know, Mississippi is at the bottom of the barrel. We're talking about taking care of our people and we're talking about health care. Uh, talk a little bit uh, real quick as we wrap up about, you know, I've heard you mention doulas. I've heard you mention midwives. And a lot mm -hmm. of people hear those terms they and confused. they get confused when they hear those terms. So I want you to kind of differentiate between the two and also talk about why they are important and why it's okay if you have someone that, that is a doula or a midwife to deliver their baby as opposed to going to a hospital. Okay, so first of all, only midwives deliver babies not doulas. Okay. I admit we have different types of midwives. We use nurse midwives. Okay. Nurse midwives are regulated. There's oversight. They're credentialed. They're insured. All right? Mm -hmm. The lay midwife is not. So you don't know what you're getting. Okay. Now, I will say Mississippi has a very rich history, especially black people. Mm -hmm. Before 1950, 90% of black babies were born via a midwife in the home. Uh, and so... Um, the midwife, the, the nurse midwife, is the only nurse practitioner who is qualified to provide prenatal care, deliver the baby, and provide newborn care, okay? okay. Um, the doula, you could be a doula. Mm -hmm. Anybody who gets some basic training to provide emotional support throughout the labor, labor and delivery process, if you will, can be a doula. That's why I said we're now training fathers to be the doulas. All right. Now, All right. Evidence shows that having that kind of support significantly reduces the likelihood of a C-section. It improves the overall quality of experience because you have that support. What happened is in 2020 when COVID came around, my workers were serving as doulas, but the hospital said one had a policy of one person. Mm -hmm. And the patients all chose the father. So mm -hmm. I said, well, we need to start yep. training the fathers and yep. after all, that will save me money, yeah, because doulas are expensive. That will save me money, and it teaches the family a skill that they will have. Absolutely, absolutely. And so the fathers get involved from the very beginning, throughout the process. They learn everything. They learn everything. Mom, the expecting mom learns. And when he goes into that hospital with her, now he's going in emboldened with skills and with knowledge. He knows what to do at home. He knows when to go to the hospital. He knows what questions to ask. He knows how to speak up, how to advocate. He becomes that doula. Absolutely. And if there's no father around, mother, sister, grandmother, we'll train anybody you bring, but you have to choose somebody to go into labor because we don't send professional people into labor with you. Right. For professional doulas may give you two visits at home. Yeah. Then they may give you another visit once the baby's born. What they are not doing is preparing you to be healthy. Let me be very clear. You can have a doula. You can have a midwife. You can have the best insurance. Doesn't matter. If you're obese, if you got underlying problems, if you're sitting on your butt eating fast food every day, mm. drinking sweet drinks, mm. smoking a cigarette, mm. drinking alcohol, mm. you're in trouble. Yeah. I don't care if you have a do or not. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter who it is. So what we do is work with you to change behavior that we know puts you at risk. Mm -hmm. And that the number one behavior is eating bad food and sitting on your butt all day, yeah, refusing yeah. to walk. Yeah. What we found is doctors refused to engage women, to talk to women about eating healthy and walking. Mm. I have asked doctors if you would just give them a prescription to walk 30 minutes a day, which you are supposed to do. Right. They don't. Why are they not doing it? They're not know? interested in prevention. See, what we do is prevent diseases. Oh, so the people won't come back to visit them again. Well, what I'm saying. It's, easier, it's easier to just perform an induction and a C-section. Mm. Is it easier? It pays more money. Do you know how much money hospitals have earned in our state from C-sections? In 2015, it was over $128 million. Wow. That was 2015. Now, I've said to you, we have the highest every year. We're almost at 40%. Right here at St. Dominic's, a lot of people like to go to St. Dominic's private. They think it's going to be a better experience. Right. Their C-section rate is 52%. Woo. Every hospital in this area has a C-section rate that's higher than 40%. And it's highest among black women. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that there's some conspiracy. What I'm saying is black women have health issues that are occurring before they become pregnant, and doctors are not addressing them. Black women are not addressing them. So if they go unaddressed, 
if nothing changes while she's pregnant, you can expect that she's going to have complications. Mm. She's more likely to have a C-section. She's more likely to have that premature baby. She's more likely to die after having that baby. Heart disease is the number one yeah. cause of women dying after having a baby. Do you think heart disease occurs as soon as the baby's born? No. Right, right. Those factors are already in place. Mm -hmm. Even for the general population, if you are obese, you are at risk of diabetes, heart disease, and having the most aggressive forms of cancer. That's black women in the general population, so it gets worse when you're pregnant because pregnancy in itself takes a toll on the human body. So we have all of this. It's a perfect storm for something to go wrong. We intervene. We work with you to change behavior. If you don't want to change behavior, please don't fill out that form. Gotcha, gotcha. Getty is real with Sisters in Birth. Give them the contact information once again if they want to get in touch Go with you. Go to the website for Sisters in Birth. It is S-I, B for baby, I-R-T-H dot org. Fill out the form. We have limited seating. It's free to you. You simply have to work the program. If you don't work the program, kick you out and replace you with someone else. Wow. Okay. And you're serious <laughs> about it. Serious about we it. We thank you for being here with us, Getty Israel. We told you guys we're going to have a lot of fantastic information on this show. I hope you've taken it all in. We're about changing the narrative here in the city of Jackson. Make sure you're tuned in to the Good Things Jackson Show. Hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving and a Thanksgiving holiday. We'll see you guys here, uh, not in the coming weekend, but the week after that, man. Make sure you're staying tuned here on 97.7, the beat of the capital for the Good Things Jackson Show. I'm Brad Kamikaze Franklin, your host.